Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to the Frostbite Tribe. In the last episode, Rare and Orchid finally led us over to the next big mountain, and we even saw the return of the digging trunk in our new royal line. So little Snowdrop, who we named for her adorable crown of ram horns, is the very first baby to actually receive the digging trunk since Meme herself. And I am very curious to see how that's going to shape the future of our tribe, especially as we have all of these ice rocks to crack open again. There is a possibility that we might find another creature just like Meme, maybe someone who actually came from her old ancient tribe with the digging trunk in their genetics, and that would make it so much easier to pass us in the future, but I am hoping that we're going to see some of the new genetics too, because there are supposedly six genes that we could crack open from the rocks. So I think today, um, Copper in particular, because he is very, very hardy with his big body and his medium tail, will probably try to make his way down the shore to crack this open and see what's waiting inside. And likewise, we might want to have uh, maybe Rare escort him down there since she is also very, very hardy with the same sort of genetics, so we wouldn't have to worry about her freezing. And it is starting to get very cold on the mountainside. The whole screen is blue, we have these snow flurries drifting through the sky again, so it seems like we're going to have to huddle together some of our um, weaker creatures. Orchid doesn't have the medium tail, so she runs the risk of freezing. And of course, we have Juneberry over here, even though she's sitting nice and toasty warm inside her hot spring, she could also fall victim to the cold temperatures if we're not careful. We're having Huckleberry stay behind just to keep all the babies safe and warm with um, his big stinky tail. I'm hoping that the stinky tail is going to keep some of the nastier predators away, but just in case, we want Orchid to stay in the area too. Why don't we actually scoot her over here so that she's next to all of her babies, but she's just a little bit further away so we can hopefully peer into him some more of this darkness. Oh, and look at that, we actually do have tasty roots all over the side of the island, excellent. So once some little snowdrop grows her second gem, she should be able to dig those up for us. That'll be a wonderful way for us to gather food, especially as the bunnies start to disappear, because I'm pretty sure they tend to skitter off once it starts to snow, because it's too hard for them to hop around in the storm. Let's see if we can bring Juneberry back, though. She can um, settle herself next to Orchid, but she won't be able to protect herself completely from all of that cold. But if we have Huckleberry move around all of the babies right in between the two um, ladies right here, then we could actually have Mulberry scoot down here instead and keep every everyone safe. There's no bird in our skies right now, so we don't have to worry about the babies getting taken away. So that means that we can also safely start moving Rare down the shore with Copper, because we want them to get over to that ice crystal as soon as possible. Since it will be giving us new genetics, there is a possibility that it will completely shake all of our plans, and that's why I want to see what's inside first, before we decide um, who is going to breed with who, before we choose any extra pairings, we need to see what we're going to get inside this rock. So I think that's really all of the safe moves we can make right now, so let's go ahead and skip the day. Now everyone should be growing a nice new gem. We have our first gems on these little babies, and I think I also heard that bird. Okay, so you definitely heard that we had some potentially unprotected babies out and about, but now that Mulberry has her second gem, she should be able to keep them safe too. Now we do have another little bunny to um, grab up if we can, but first let's sniff around and listen just to make sure that there's nothing lurking in the darkness. And so far so good, so let's have you Juneberry jump up here to grab the bunny for us. There we go, and all of our babies are still safe, right? I believe they are. The bird is not moving in the sky, so we should be just fine. Gather up that meat for us. It's kind of funny too because she is from our um, gathering line So we were going to have her maybe harvest up the shells along the shore But it's a little bit hard for her to do that since it's so cold until we grow our populations more We're really just going to have to huddle these creatures together so for now, she's going to do her best scooping up bunnies for us, which might actually be her first experience with bunny meat. Van Keer's followers always preferred the berries over the meat if they could help it, but she's going to have to just make do with what she has at this point. So Huckleberry could move right in between the two babies just to keep them nice and warm and safe, of course, so we don't have any questions over whether they're safe or not. And then um, I suppose Mulberry could move off because she does have the ability to do so. Why don't we have her um, follow after Queen Rare? That might be a good idea. I'm sure she would enjoy to see what she's getting up to. We could have them scoot along the shore, get just a little bit closer to um, this giant rock over here. And this bird is very interested in the rock too. 
That's something. I wonder if there is um, a younger creature inside. I guess we'll find out on the next turn because Copper is right next to it now. So we could move, um, I suppose, Orchid right on top of the stump. And then we'll have to shuffle Huckleberry to the other side of the babies again. They're like playing musical chairs over here, just kind of swapping tiles left and right. But otherwise, I think I do want to leave the babies inside their nests. We might actually want to pick up these nests too. I don't think they're going to be used um, in a couple turns, at least until we figure out who is inside that rock. And I think we probably want to move them a little bit further inland anyway, because I don't think we're going to be able to place one right here. Last time we tried to place a nest on these snowy tiles, it didn't work out for us. And we want to create a nice big ring of nests right around our stinky tailed creature so he can keep them all the babies safe. But otherwise, let's zoom out again and make sure that nothing is going to come sneaking down the mountainside. Well, the snow did stop and it looks like it may have warmed up just a tiny bit because the screen isn't quite so blue anymore. And we have a rabbit up here. Okay, so we definitely want Rare to um, chase down the bunny because we need the food. That is a priority number one, despite the fact that we are right next to him, this ice rock. So let's see who is going to be inside this brand new rock. I would imagine that there's a pretty good chance that we're going to see a brand and new genetic here. So let's see, let's have you crack this open for us. Oh my gosh, look at those horns. Are those like moose antlers? Megaloceros horns, I believe that says. Oh my goodness, that is amazing. And you even have the um, digging paw. Excellent, so you can also help us dig up all of these tasty roots around the place. Though of course it would be best if um, Snowdrop could do that because she gives us a little bit more roots. Oh, she can already dig them up with her second gem. Okay, let's use your turns to dig up all those roots. There you go. You can show us just how many roots you can dig up at once with that lovely digging trunk. But you miss. You are quite interesting. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like she's giving us any new immunity genes, so that might be a little bit tricky. And it's another female too. We are um, getting a lot of females in our tribe right now. We only actually have um, two males, which are the ones that we brought with us from the previous island. Now it looks like Copper would not be able to breed with her because they both have immunity gene F. And let's see, what exactly is the state of um, Huckleberry over here? He has K and B, oh no. Oh no, I think she actually has B too, yeah she does. Okay, that's not particularly a good thing. I guess we're going to have to have them start breeding very, very soon. So Huckleberry should be able to breed with um, Rare because they have completely different immunity genes. I guess they're going to have to get started on their next line of um, little royal babies and cross our fingers that we'll have a male. And then I believe Snowdrop, with her immunity gene K and B, might be able to um, breed with Copper. That's another perfect matchup with the immunity genes, and it gives us another way to ensure that the um, digging trunk won't disappear because, of course, all of her babies will probably end up with it in their um, inactive traits. Now let's see, Anala, we definitely want you to um, come back with us to the tribe. And how about the uh, stat boost on those? Plus two in strength. So it's actually a little bit better than the ram horns? Oh, I wonder what they must think of that because of course the ram horns always connect them to the goddess of war, but now they have these very, very strong horns on their hand, the Megalosaurus horns. I wonder if um, that was like the anime of ancient times maybe with her giant moose antlers. Either way, that is certainly a very good sign for our tribe and I'm sure that means she's going to be able to hold her own too. So let's have her scoot right into the hot spring to kind of warm up after staying inside the ice rock for such a long time. Time. And then we can sniff around and listen to so far so good. It is still very very quiet We just have this little bunny way up here that maybe mulberry could try to chase down We kind of scared it a little bit And I think I'm actually going to have her on pick up some of the nesting material instead Because she wouldn't be able to grab it with her one turn anyway now flurry thanks to her cold resistance should actually be able to move away from her family So let's have her on um, maybe scoot off this way because we have all these roots over here. Oh, but there's a lot over here here too. Okay, so maybe these are the ones that Anala will take care of, and then we'll have um, Snowdrop continue along the left side of the island to dig up all of the tasty roots over here. And for that matter, if she lives long enough, the journey might even take her all the way over to the second ice rock on this island. That is a potential idea, so let's have Flurry start carving a path out for you. She can scoot right over here next to um, little Juneberry. 
And then let's see, what can we do with you? We do want you to um, maybe find some shells on the shore if you can. Let's uh, listen around. We have a little leech down here that we can apparently hear in the water. So we don't want to get too close to that. But we should be able to um, spawn the shells eventually. There should be shells in the water and not just leeches. Typically when I come here, I do find quite a bit of shells. Now in the meantime, we want um, Huckleberry and Rare to meet up. So maybe we'll have him scoot along this way to try to find her. He can go right over here next to um, this little stomp actually and light up just a little bit more. Reveal the bunny for us again so we know exactly where it is. I guess he was a little bit worried about her charging off on her own trying to find all of these uh, new pack mates in the ice. He was definitely worried about our queen and he wants to make sure that she's okay with his big stinky tail. He doesn't want to see any predators giving her trouble. Now Mother Orchid can make an even better path for her baby by scooting over here into this hot spring and then I believe that is all the turns we can make for today so let's skip again hopefully it's not going to snow so far so good it doesn't look like it's snowing anymore we have this bunny down here too who spawned right inside that burrow and let some um, listen around and sniff around too okay still none of those new predators if we don't see those new predators on this mountain then i am going to assume that there is something terribly wrong with this save file because it has been so quiet and i have no idea why because typically when i play on the mountain i end up finding tons and tons of predators right off the bat so it doesn't make any sense to me, but I'm hoping that we're going to see them just to um, give our tribe a little bit of a challenge. Now, if Juneberry scoots over here, she can actually pick up her very first shell. So we do have shells here. We can find them. We just have to be very, very vigilant as we comb the mountainside. We still have this little bunny over here too. So I wonder if we can maneuver rare without scaring it. It doesn't seem to notice her. So she could still possibly breed with um, Huckleberry. If we could get that to work, there we go. Two tries was just enough. And then Huckleberry could actually chase the bunny all the way down to the shore for us. There we go. So we do have a little bit of extra food for him to pick up for his um, new family. And likewise, it would probably be a good idea to um, have Copper meet up with Snowdrop as soon as possible. But maybe we should have them go around the other side of the mountain. Since they are technically both going to um, join up by this rock, that might be a good idea just so we can kind of scope out the area a little bit more. And we'll have Anala go ahead and follow him for now. Um, She does have the frog toes, so she's going to be a little bit harder to move around, but that way he's not alone. He is pretty strong, but I'm not sure if he would be able to stand up against all of the really nasty predators in the area, so we're just going to have to keep our eye on them. Now let's see, do we have any other tasty roots in the area? We have one over here, we have one up here, and then one right next to Flurry. So you guys are doing a pretty good job of at least finding the roots for Snowdrop to eat. And so far we haven't actually had to worry about our creatures um, getting too cold yet, so we'll venture out a little bit more, I think. Now that so many of our creatures are exploring the outsides of the island, let's have a brave little Mulberry try to make her way up the very, very top. This is some very um, uneven ground too, very rocky, lots of of places for her to potentially slip and um, get trapped if she's not careful. But that's all the turns that we can use for today, so let's go ahead and skip the day. Rare isn't giving birth just yet because she wasn't able to make one of those nests, but the birds are definitely watching. Quite interesting. Every single time we have babies, they tend to swoop in, so they are definitely keeping a close eye on our tribe. The others, though, not so much, unless they're lurking in the darkness, so so far we're all right. Let's have Anala scoot her way around um, Copper so he can lunge as far as possible. I mean, honestly, within a couple more turns, we should be able to crack open the second rock, too. But let's make sure that Rare can actually um, make her nest now. We'll set it down right next to the hot spring, which honestly is a pretty decent location to um, make her nest. Maybe only rivaled by the stump itself, but we do, of course, want Huckleberry to um, make his way right in between all of the nests that we're about to build. Now we won't have to worry about the big body for their babies since they both have that. So let's see, what do we have in the mutation menu so far? The medium tail, which would definitely be a very good thing for their babies to have, and the ram horns. I think we might as well um, just leave it like that. He uh, has the ram horns in his inactive traits, and they also both have the poison fangs. Oh, that's good. Okay, so we might have even more poison fanged babies, just like little Flurry. That would be excellent if we could have a whole bunch of poison fanged babies, because they should definitely be able to help us out if we run into any trouble. And it looks like Mulberry grew her very final gem at the top of the mountain, so let's give her her orange gem, since she is technically one of Van Keer's followers. 
and then she can explore just a little bit deeper on the mountain. So far, it has been very, very quiet, and look at all these rocks, too. Not only could she slip and fall, potentially, and get herself in some trouble, but it's also very hard just to maneuver herself around this place. If anything tries to block her path, then she might be in a little bit of a situation. But likewise, she might be able to position herself in a way that the um, carnivores and the predators can't actually touch her as long as she's behind those rocks. Now, how far can you guys get? We have little Snowdrop way back here who's still trying to dig up all of her tasty roots. Let's have her catch up with her family, though. She could um, go right over here to dig up these two roots on the next turn. We'll leave that one behind for now, just so she doesn't lag too far behind. Flurry and Orchid could even help out Juneberry as they're trying to find um, some shells for them to eat, too. Let's have Flurry scoot over here right next to the hot spring, and we definitely want Juneberry to keep a very wide distance around that um, leech. Now, I don't see any more shells on this um, side of the island, but there is a crab at there right next to a shell. Okay, so you are guarding the shells. Let's move her right there so she'll be able to take care of that on the next turn, and we might actually have to enlist the help of Orchid for that too. We could bring her a little bit closer because it's going to take her a bit longer to move over there. Oh no, but there's a leech. Okay, so we're going to have to have somebody take the leech off of her if she does decide to lunge in and try to take care of that crab it. Now let's see what this very first baby is going to look like between a rare and huckleberry. Let's see, it has the claw and the nimble fingers, so you have been touched by our balanced sisters from the Fernleaf Islands. Unfortunately, she does not have the uh, poison fangs, though she did manage to carry it, and she didn't get the uh, ram horns either, the nice lovely crown that her mother has. She actually looks quite a bit like her father, with the spotty orange fur and that big cracker jaw, but I think we're going to name her Avalanche, because she looks like she is very, very strong despite it all, and I'm sure she's going to be able to hold her own. She is hardy like her mother, so we won't have to worry about her freezing. And just in time too, because of course it's getting much, much colder, and oh my goodness, three birds in the sky now? Three birds, really? We don't even have any babies over on this side of the island. In fact, all of our babies have actually grown up. Look at you guys, you are so adorable. Let's make sure you gather up your roots because we don't want to get too low on food. And then you can use your other turn to scoot right next to him, Flurry. Now we are so close to the second rock over here, and I would imagine that whoever is sitting inside that second ice rock is probably um, at least a tribe mate of our brand new Anala. Most likely they knew each other since they are on the very same island, so this time she's not going to be alone. Meme unfortunately didn't have anyone from her old tribe to keep her company, which was why she felt so confused when she woke up. So Inala, despite the fact that she has already made some very good friends, especially in Copper, will at least be able to share um, this experience with somebody who she used to know. And I think they will end up saving the Krabbits for a different day. Most likely, especially now that it's snowing so much, they just want to get to a safe location where they can make a camp, because if they spend too much time out here, then they're going to get completely buried in the snow. And likewise, I mean, poor little Mulberry up here. I think you should probably start moving down the mountainside. <gasps> Oh my gosh, a native little creature. Kiro, how are you even living here? He only has the medium body and the swimming tail. He has a crippled paw. He also carries the infertility trait, which um, just like one of the creatures that we found on our previous islands is going to be a bit of a problem. That doesn't mean that he's completely infertile because he also has um, a plus three on the top. So he technically can have babies, but we don't want to see that popping up on um, too many of our babies. So if we do invite him to the tribe, which Honestly, we might as well. He has two completely different immunity genes. And um, he only has six days left on his life, too. So we're going to have to find a way to, like, trap him here. He seems a little bit shy, after all. A little bit skittish. Oh, he's moving through all of the hot springs. It's probably because he's a very, very cold little critter. He doesn't exactly have any um, big fluffy fur to keep him warm. But luckily, we are just about out of turns here. We just have this family over here to take care of, so this guy shouldn't get too far away from us. Maybe he's actually going toward on the ice rock too. I wonder if that also caught his attention. Or he's just trying to get away from all these birds. Like, they are hovering right above your family. This is probably very, very concerning for you. Rare could scoot over here and um, hopefully have another baby with Huckleberry. We can place another nest down right over here. And we're going to leave Huckleberry in the area too because he needs to keep his baby safe. 
Now he definitely scooted away. Little Kiro is gone. Completely gone. Oh no, I hope we didn't lose track of him. Hopefully he's going to make his way back because he's going to be way too cold out on his own. Now let's skip the day again and see if we can um, hopefully track him down and of course also try to um, open up that rock. But I think, oh no, Juneberry, you were in the water too long and you picked up one of those leeches. So you probably want to move over here and have Orchid uh, take that off of you. Now, can we find Kiro again? Have you moved into the light by any chance? It does not seem so. Oh, but we finally have our first new predator back here. So it's a little bit difficult to see because of course um, he's only that red outline, but this is the balance bear. So we are about to uh, witness one of the toughest challenges on the mountain biome. And I think we might actually want to move Anala away because she's not exactly designed to um, take on a bear. In fact, it would be quite Quite a good thing if we could um, avoid the detection of that bear at least until we make a camp of our own and at least until we figure out who is inside our second rock. We have a little bunny over here though that we definitely want to grab and then we are so so close to getting over here with copper. If we could light up the way a little bit more then we might be able to um, just open it on this turn. Let's see if we can maneuver them around enough. We might not be able to just because we had to take on um, that leech off of Juneberry and there's even more bunnies over here. Well we might as well chase them straight into um, our other tribe mates if we can, though instead you seem to have taken over the throne. Okay, this must be Bunny Kingdom way up here. That's good to know, just in case we need some extra food. But yeah, I think we are a little bit too short, so Copper can at least scoot right next to the rock, and then on the next turn we get to see what our second creature is. Our second creature and Anala's friend most likely, and this baby back here! Yet another female! Yet another female! We still have not seen the birth of um, a male in this tribe, which is very very, very concerning, but she actually has the ram horns, the cracker jaw again just like her father, and the panda patterns. I think we'll let her keep her name too, just like we let Amarir um, keep hers. So little Anasi, who is definitely a sign from our goddess of war. Now if we move Avalanche over here, then she should still be safe next to her mother, and then we can have them have another baby and just hope again that this one manages to um, become a male instead. We desperately need males to show up on this island. Likewise, this could be a male inside the ice, so we definitely want them to um, crack the open as soon as possible. And I think Anala might be getting a little bit cold. It does seem like she's losing some energy, so I'll keep a close eye on her. But otherwise, let's go ahead and skip the day yet again and see where that bear ends up to? I wonder if maybe the bear is going after Kiro, that a mysterious creature that we saw in the darkness. So far, I don't smell him around in the area. I can't hear him. So it seems like he may have skittered off somewhere. I do hope we come across him again before he gets too old because he did have those special immunity genes. But for now, let's see what's inside this rock over here too. Anala's friend, of course. And hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll have just as um, new immunity genes as Kiro did. Oh my gosh, it's another female too and she has a giant tail the hammer tail oh my goodness that gives us another point in strength very interesting so clearly animeme is definitely smiling down on this island i wouldn't be surprised if this ancient tribe valued strength as much as we do right now not only that but um Konace, I believe her name is, also has that digging paw just like Anala, so I wonder if maybe they were even siblings. I wonder. But she does have immunity gene E. She has G and she has E, so that means that she could breed with copper. Okay, so all is not lost. We could have Copper breed with um, Konace, and then we can also make sure that he definitely starts a family with poor little Snowdrop. Oh, you are getting cold. You are getting very, very cold. So let's sit you right up here so you can huddle with your family. There you go, all nice and toasty worm again. She has been working so hard trying to find all of those tasty roots in the ground. And look at this. As if things couldn't get any more perfect for us over on this side of the island, we have so many tasty roots over here. We could actually have her set up like a nest right on top of maybe the clovers or the throne, and that way she'll have plenty of food to dig up for all of her babies. So Copper is kind of going to be like the father of uh, many of our ancient lines, it seems. His babies are going to have plenty of ancient genetics to spread around, though I really hope we're going to be able to find somebody for Anala before she passes away. If only she could find Kiro out in the darkness. Maybe she'll have to go searching for that strange creature before he gets too old. We'll have to see if maybe she can scoot her way down the shore and uh, stumble into him because he couldn't have gotten very far away. 
He was also very, very cold, so he liked to stick by the hot springs to keep himself warm. If only he hadn't been so shy. Maybe Mulberry is a little bit too brash and reckless for his taste. Maybe she scared him a little bit when she stumbled her way down the mountainside, and that's why he fled before we could say hi. But we'll definitely continue to search him out in the next episode and certainly try to keep these ancient genetics in our lines. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!